Okay, so I often get asked, is two gigabytes of RAM enough for retro gaming on a Raspberry Pi? So this is a four gig Raspberry Pi 5, and I've got a Compute Module 5, which is a two gig model. And I've got some more advanced emulators on here, so GameCube, I've also got PS2, and I've also got Wii on here as well. And I think we'll try a bit of Dreamcast, I've been playing around with that recently, to see if we need that extra RAM. And obviously part of the reason people ask it is because of price, because the Raspberry Pi 16 gig model is £115, the 2 gig model is only £48, so 4 gig for 57 30 so the difference between that this is only a really a tenner, so I would pretty much always say go for the 4 gig model, uh, and the 8 gig model we're looking at £76.50, so quite a big jump there. So let's just double check this is a 4 gig Raspberry Pi 5. So if I quit out of this, and I'm pretty sure I've already got NeoFetch on here. I haven't. Let's just install it and see that apt install NeoFetch. So 4 gig Raspberry Pi 5. So if I type in emulation station, that will boot it back up. Let's go straight in at PS2, probably the hardest one here, and uh, we'll see what we get. Let's do a bit of Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Okay, so no problems with 25 FPS here. Oh, dropping a little bit, but nothing really. So we'll just drive around and see how well it maintains that. Even with the big crashes, it seems to be coping all right. Oh, not really worried about crashing into things because it means that more things are going on so if anything it's going to affect the frame rate but yeah it rarely drops below 25 and you might be able to hear thunder in the background we're having a bit of a storm here Yeah, that rarely drops below 25 and feels absolutely fine. Right, so I'm going to switch over to the Compute Module 5 now with 2 gig of RAM. Now my Compute Module 5 doesn't have any extra cooling with it, but I do have this CM5 Active Cooler, which Edatech sent to me, must have been ages ago, possibly when I didn't even have a CM5. So let's pop that on. And I've just seen that this board doesn't seem to have a fan adapter on it. So I'm going to have to try and find one that takes a fan. So this one's got the Raspberry Pi 5 fan connector, so that one's suitable to use. So let's swap that over. So that's the CM5 IO Base B. And this one... is the Base A. I'm still going to use these legs. So the kit comes with these screws and spacers and it's got three thermal pads to get the power, I guess that's the RAM and the CPU. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's nicely in place. Now this might not clip down because of the screws. No, it doesn't. So the screws are going to have to go all the way through, but they look like they're long enough pop these little plastic spacers in place okay the screws don't go all the way through and it's because I'm using that saver board so I don't really need it in there the thermal pads keep it in place and this is only for this test it's not a long-term thing okay that's the cooler in place looks nice and it stays on well because of the thermal pads so let's pop the SD card in and we can power that up. Okay, so let's see how we get on with two gig. So let's jump in and have a little drive around. Keep an eye, so we're still on 25 at the moment. Let's crash into some cars to cause some more things going on. It's not dropping, is it? It is actually performing the same. Whoa. Let's get around the corner. I was kind of not knowing what to expect really um, with the two gig model. 
Now I have definitely had things that don't run very well on 2 gig before. The web browser especially is awful on 2 gig. It really runs out super quick. But this emulating PS2, no problem at all. And looking at the specs on Wikipedia, the overall <laughs> megabytes of memory that it had was 42 megabytes. So I guess it isn't gonna test it. I really thought it would do. Maybe the difference would be if you're running an operating system. So if I was to quit out of this, and we're gonna quit out of RetroPie, and launch the desktop environment. If I haven't mentioned, if you want this version of RetroPie, I've got it as a download. I'll link it in the description. I've got a separate video on how to set it up and how to add things to it. So now that I'm running a desktop operating system, if I was to try and run EtherSX2, which I haven't got installed in the desktop operating system, so I'm gonna to have to install that. I've got a separate guide on how to install that. So let's run it in a desktop environment without the space this time. Okay, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. So part of the difference here is that I've got a desktop environment running. So is it dipping? I don't think it is. So even with a desktop environment in the background, we're still not using too much. So if I, let's have a little crash. So if I tap the Windows key and do HTOP, so memory, 854 of 193. We could certainly shrink that a bit and we'll see how well it's doing. It's still low, isn't it? So with a desktop environment, two gig isn't actually anything to worry about. And I really thought it would be up until now. So it's definitely not the bottleneck on PS2. So some of these games are huge and very slow. So Burnout doesn't run well at all. Uh, Dave Mirror runs well, Castlevania runs well, Do Downhill Domination runs well. But if we try and pick something like Spider-Man 3, which runs okay, let's see if we've got something that maxes out the RAM, if that's the bottleneck. So this game does have a bit of slowdown. But again, we're not using very much RAM at the moment. So the RAM's definitely not the issue. So it's weird that this game does feel slow at different times. And you can play around with the settings. There's loads of settings on PS2 to make it run better, but this is more about seeing how much RAM it's using. Yeah, so again, very little RAM. I'm actually amazed. I, I really wasn't expecting this. So let's try something else. So Shadow of the Colossus is a huge game and really doesn't run well on Pi 5. It's not even worth playing really on Pi 5 or at least as far as I've got it with settings. I've not really tried super hard to go through everything because it's not really a game that I ever played back in the day and I would probably play it massively upscaled on my PC. You can hear that it's slow so F9, changing the software renderer, sometimes helps. Yeah, so that helps in that case. But you can probably hear by the audio, I haven't got it super loud, but that's actually using less RAM at the moment. But I guess it's probably just a cutscene. If we try F9 again... Yeah, no, it's worse. But... As we can see, I mean, the CPU was working incredibly hard there. That's the bit that was struggling. It's not running shy of memory. So I think that's probably conclusive on PS2 emulation, at least on the Pi 5, that two gig isn't the bottleneck. Now let's try installing the Dolphin emulator on here, which I think we can probably just do through recommended software. My KDE build has the Discover store in it, which is much easier. But uh, we can use this. Let's close that down. GameCube and Wii emulator. And apply. And the password on this I think is still Pi. Yeah. 
So predictions, is the GameCube emulator going to use more RAM? So I could probably also do this through RetroPie, but then I don't get HTOP in the same way. But RetroPie, I would say, uses less resources. So if we're close to it working well with the desktop environment, then you'll probably find you'll get a little bit of gain through doing it through RetroPie. So it should show up in games now, yeah. Hulk is easy to run on this. And obviously the reason I'm doing the more recent systems that the Pi 5 can handle is that much older systems it shouldn't have any problem with at all, unless there's something particularly odd or difficult to run. And it appears to crash. Uh, when you hit the start button it crashes. And once it's done that, yeah, the emulator goes like, so we're going to task manager, that should let me get rid of it. Yeah. So we'll try another dolphin game. Okay, so let's see how we look at, yeah, look low, less memory uses than the PS2 emulator. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, <laughs> it does this. We can say ignore. That's nothing to do with RAM. Although, oh, oh it definitely crashes more than it normally does. And if we just have a look at GameCube memory. 16 meg video, so 40, so around about the same as the PS2. Oh, and this is interesting. It shows uh, PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. Original Xbox does run on a Raspberry Pi 5, but not that you'd want to play it. It's that slow, and obviously part of this because we had a lot more RAM, but it was just a more powerful system overall. But if we start opening windows that, and you might be able to hear the rain in the background, it's certainly not the detect fan. I haven't, I haven't heard it at all. It's on, but it's running at quite a slow speed. We've gone over a gig for the first time, and if we try, say, BBC Sport, so a couple of sites with lots of images and things in them. And I think it already starts managing it because it de this would feel definitely a little bit faster. So when you've got a bit more headroom there, it's better. Uh, and let's try something like YouTube. Yeah, it just, it just really feels sluggish. I am used to, I'd say mostly I use an eight gig Pi 5 for web browsing and sort of, sort of general desktop use. I have got a 16 gig, I never think it gets anywhere near really using it all, apart from maybe AI running a local language model. So again, it's still not near the two, but it's using the swap. So it is working harder, and as you can see, YouTube already at this stage, I mean, you're not gonna get a two gig Pi and try and run a PS2 or a GameCube emulator and try and use the browser at the same time and even move in the window. Yeah, it didn't move then, or it is moving now. So we go Lee PSP video HDR and we'll just play a bit of this and we'll run it at 1080. 1. 1.2, yeah. It's definitely running slower than it than it would be. Weird how it's not coping too badly with that. So if I escape back out of that, let's let's get it playing again. So switch back to the 4 gig Pi 5. Let's see if Hulk runs without any problems. It's not using the swap file. Okay, so this crashes on the same bit on Hulk. Again, we're using very little memory and it hasn't used the swap file at all. But if I, yeah, it has crashed. Okay, let's see how well it's gonna run. Oh, well that looked like a good landing to me. Oh, right, so is it gonna, Okay, so it gets stuck on that bit. So actually, the two gig and the four gig are pretty much happening the same. We're not getting it using the swap file at all, which would obviously help things, but it's obviously some sort of graphics thing with uh, being installed into this. But we can use the RetroPie version on the two gig model to see how well it's coping with those two GameCube games. So I'm back on RetroPie now, because I was only using the desktop environment to try and trip it up to use more RAM and see if that made a difference. So GameCube was the one that we were struggling on. Let's try Hulk. 
Okay, well, we've got further already. I love this guy. Yeah, you can see it's working anyway. Uh, and the frames, uh, well, it goes into about 40 at times. It doesn't feel slow ever. <laughs> right, so let's try something else. Okay, let's see how well it works. Not sure if my joystick is configured correctly. Yeah, I'm not getting any errors now. Seems to be working absolutely fine, lovely and smooth. My controller needs reconfiguring though. Because, yeah, the X and Y I think are opposite, which sometimes happens on GameCube emulators. But let's just run through the game just to see that it's, yeah, it's not crashing and it's running nicely. So yeah, PS2 for retro gaming, if you're going to use RetroPie or something similar like Recallbox or Batacera, it's probably absolutely fine because these older games use so little RAM in the past. So a 2 gig Pi 5 is actually pretty reasonable for retro gaming. So up to GameCube and PS2. We has a bit of a struggle anyway on a Pi 5 and I don't think it will be RAM related. But if you're running any older operating systems you'll be absolutely fine. It is only £10 more for a Pi 5 with 4 gig, so you're probably better off with that. Although in your territory, there might be a bigger difference than that. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.